Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and this week we'll continue our series on audio by using audio keyframes. Now I've created a sequence, there's just some video and a couple of sound bites in between and I have just edited uh, one audio track uh, with music under the whole thing, so under the, the images and under the sound bites as well. And of course, while here it's nice and the music is loud and should be, it's kind of hard to understand what the guy is uh, talking about when the music is so loud. So what we could do by not using audio keyframes is turn down the volume under the sound bites by just adding a couple of edits right at the sound bite then turning down the volume on these parts say minus 26 or something and transition between those different parts let's say a 40 frame transition and I'll apply this transition to all the edits from in to out. This will automatically transition between all those and... It's interesting because you can see sleeves that you've seen before in a new way. And that generally works. But that's not the only way we could do it. We could also do it with audio keyframes and that's what we're going to do right now. So I have the exact same sequence with nothing done here. Still the same problem, audio has the same level. Well, the music has the same level anyway. And the first thing uh, we need to do uh, if we want to create audio keyframes is turn on uh, the audio keyframes view, which is called automation gain. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. You can do it on a track by track basis by extending the track control panel clicking here and saying auto gain and you can see pretty much nothing here but there's a new little thin gray line that has appeared which tells you the automation gain is on you can also turn on automation gain for all tracks at the same time by going to the fast menu going to audio data and checking auto gain here this will not only do it on this track but on all tracks in your timeline. But that's not what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I have a special uh, workspace set up that just changes my timeline view to my uh, automation gain view, which uh, incidentally also turns on the waveforms, which I find handy in this case, and enlarges the tracks, the audio tracks anyway. Uh, which, uh, you know, does make sense. And if you don't know how to how to do this and you're thinking, well, that's a nice nice thing to do and I'd like to know how to do it, you can check out a previous show where I go into detail on how to do it. Okay, enough about that. Now let's get to it. I have automation gain turned on and what I can do now is add keyframes to the tracks. Uh, I will add the keyframes to the tracks that are enabled so for you know demonstration sake i will enable both a1 and a3 hit my keyframe button that i've mapped to the keyboard or that is generally mapped on your keyboard and now you can see it uh, applies a keyframe on track one and three of course i don't really want um a keyframe on track one so i'll uh un check track one and we'll only do my keyframes on track three so generally for uh, changing the volume i of course need two keyframes one with the final result and one where the transition is starting so let's say uh, i want to start the transition here and it should be uh, on the low volume here and do the same thing at the end of his soundbite and here again and here as well 
Now I have not done anything but create keyframes. I have not changed any volume here. So, you know, it just still sounds the same as before. What I need to do now is change the keyframes. Right now, I can't change those keyframes at all because uh, in Media, Media Composer 5 or later, you have to enable keyframe editing in the smart tools. So I will enable the keyframe editing in the smart tools. And now if I hover over a keyframe, there you can see it turns into a hand with uh, its index finger pointing at the keyframes, which uh, indicates, oh yeah, you can drag it up and down. Generally, you can only drag it up and down, which is of course what you want. And if you look at the bottom of the timeline, you can see it tells you how you're changing it. So now I'm at plus seven dB and now I'm going to minus 15 dB. And that is relative to the changes that you've made in the audio mixer already. Okay. So now I'm at minus 17.9 dB and if you know I'm anal about it, which I am, I think, ah, oh, geez, minus 17.9. I would like minus 18 just so it's clean, but I can't get to it with the mouse. That's where you can change your audio mixer mode to auto gain. And you have basically the same thing as the audio mixer just for your keyframes. So now here you you can type minus 18 and it changes your keyframe to minus 18. Okay, so now it's all well and good and I would like, you know, to have this keyframe be at the same point so I could just type minus 18 here as well. But it, that is, let me tell you right now, not the smartest way to do it. <laughs> so what is the smartest way to do it? Well, the smartest thing to do would be to change those two keyframes both at the same time, now wouldn't it? And your wish will instantaneously be granted <laughs> when I show you how to do it. <laughs> If you mark in and mark out in your sequence, you can see now those two keyframes are in the marked region. If I change one keyframe, it will change the other one as well because it's in the same marked region. So you could also change like 15 keyframes at once. Uh, they all just have to be in the same marked region. So again, let's change this to minus 18 dBs. Okay, now let's uh, listen to that. It's interesting because you can see sleeves that you've seen before in a new way. Okay, that didn't sound too bad. It's interesting. What I'm thinking is this uh, transition is a bit too long. So I would like uh, to change the position of the keyframe. Now, if you remember, I told you generally you can only move the keyframe up or down. But of course, there's a way to uh, also change the position and that is by holding down the Option key or uh, the Alt key on Windows and now clicking. And now you can drag it to the left and right. You can't change it, you know, you can't change the volume now, just the position. So let's put this somewhere here and listen to it again it's interesting because you can see that's nice new way. now what you can't do unfortunately is change the position of several keyframes by marking in and out that would be handy now wouldn't it but it doesn't work that way unfortunately okay so generally it's a pretty easy thing to do, right? Uh, now you you know pretty much every, everything there is to know about it. Now why should you use this over uh, the other method, you know, making edits and uh, going the audio mixer route? Well, I'd say you, you shouldn't. There's uh, pros and cons for both ways of working. I find that generally uh, using the audio mixing method is quite a lot simpler. Plus, there's also uh, a benefit. Let's get back to the sequence uh, with the audio mixer. So let's just say I want to make this sound clip shorter. So I'll go into trim mode. 
and uh, I'll uh, just you know trim to the left, make the sound clip shorter. Just very simple. You can see my transition moves with my trim. If I do the same thing with uh, my audio keyframe thingy. And now you can see, of course, uh, my transition has not changed its place. And I have to manually change the position of the transition. So this can be a problem if your transitions don't move with your footage. But there's also a great benefit to using audio keyframes. First of all, you have a very granular control, so I could also create a transition that is not linear but for example something like this a little steep if you're a beginner. that is uh, kind of difficult to do with uh, the normal transitions and also watch what happens when I open uh, the audio suite and just apply a plugin like Dverb just do pretty much nothing with it right here and just Render it, do the same effect here. Render all these effects. Now having audio suite plugins like uh, the Dverb uh, applied to multiple effects creates problems in itself, you know, because uh, the reverb now only works club based and not, uh, you know, over the edges of the club, which is a problem. It's interesting. Even if that doesn't bother you, look what happens if I change the uh, volume of one of those clips. So let's just say uh, minus 26 dB was a bit too low volume, so I'll up it a bit. And immediately all the effects become unrendered. The um, audio suite plugins as well as the transitions. Now let's see what happens if I do the same thing here. Let's get back into audio keyframe mode and change this. See, it does not become unrendered. That is because the automation gain is processed after everything else in the audio. After all the plugins, after the EQ, after the transitions, only then are the changes of automation gain applied. And that means that whatever you change in the automation gain does not affect the rendering of uh, the plugins and stuff like that. So, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good reason to use uh, automation gain as well. But generally, if you have never used automation gain and got around fine, you know, not using it, you don't have to religiously start using it now. Uh, again, for most things, I personally think that, you know, adding edits and uh, changing uh, the volume with the mixer and doing transitions works faster and just as well. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching this episode of the Avid Screencast. If you like, go ahead and subscribe at avidscreencast.com right in the upper right corner here and watch past episodes as well. And if you have any comments or suggestions like future show topics or anything, just drop me a line at mail at avidscreencast.com or just comment on the website. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash avidscreencast and on Facebook, facebook.com slash avidscreencast. And if you'd like to know what kinds of things I do in my day job, check out editguy.de where I do promote myself. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.